Hi, welcome back to our garage conversion. I'd say it's pretty much a garage again now. We can start converting it. First job is going to be to finish off the roof and then we'll get onto some stud walls. I'm kind of doing a back to front timber for it. Everything's back to front with this project. But um, I have, can't get around to doing this brickwork or the windows uh, in the next couple of weeks, but I need to get this insulation in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get our stud walls put in. They'll have a breather membrane on the back. Then I'll have all the insulation in, vapor barrier, plasterboard, and all that stuff. I can then come in and do this brickwork afterwards or have it done by a brickie. Um, and sort out these openings. There's nothing I can't do from outside apart from uh, what I've taken off these grates, security grates. The rest of these can all be taken out from the other side. The glazing uh, beads are on the other side and they should just pull out. Now from what I've seen it looks like we've got a damp proof membrane underneath the slab but I will be adding another one on top but where the stud wall sits because I'm putting them in first uh, they need to be on a DPC so I'll put that along the bottom and then we'll back the whole lot with the breather membrane like a roofing felt type thing and stand it up. Now the, uh, you could probably get away without doing the membrane I think the building regs guy said he prefers it and you definitely want to do it if you're using a soft insulation um, but because we're kind of a little bit exposed temporarily until the brickwork's done, it's worth doing. And then we'll stand it up and we'll move on to the next one. Now every frugal part of me wants to cut around the window now and use up offcuts. But yeah, it's one of those speed things efficiency and the fact that we will be taking down that wall there's nothing to say that I can't get it done in one day so it could be exposed for a, a few hours. One of these is a must after using a staple gun for years and years on this sort of thing and then going along the hammer afterwards. I think it was £15 or so. I will leave a link below if I can find it. Um, well worth it. I think that's a pretty good result. It's all uh, nice and solid there. What I've done is I've, I've actually screwed it up to the beam because I know the beam is perfectly level. And then down the bottom, then I'll just shim it if I have to. But I put that mortar bed down last night and that's pretty, pretty much supported. I think I, I need about a two mil packer at that one end, a little wedge. 
because I've left it flush with the front of the pier, just stood off a little bit. Same with the beam, and then what that means we can fill our insulation between the studs, but our, our layer of insulation that's going over the top, which is like a thermal break, will continue over everything, which would just mean that all the piers are on the outside of the insulation and the vapour barrier, and same with the beam at the top, and that will be tied into the ceiling vapour barrier. I just cannot find a decent impact bit that doesn't shatter after a couple of hours of use. These Milwaukee ones are the latest ones I'm trying. I only bought them yesterday and I've got through three, two, three, three already. But even on the lowest setting, it just seems a little bit, as soon as you hit a knot and you're really giving it some, they tend to chip, but. It should be a little bit loose either side because I've gone with 2.4 meters. Not much to go off there, apart from the fact that I want our stud to end up so it's flush with the front of our block or a couple of mil off, so we can carry our insulation straight over the whole lot. And then I can level all the posts down from there, all the studs down from there, and then fix the bottom and tomorrow through that mortar bed when it's all uh, gone off. Now, of course, I'm going to get lots of questions here. Why aren't I using treated timber? And I just don't think there is. You could, and there's no reason why you shouldn't. But really, if I've got that um, membrane on the back, we've got decent weatherproofing via the block work and the render and the paint. But really, there's no wood on masonry contact. We've got the DPC underneath. And another little thing is, sometimes if you use freshly pressure treated stud work in a garage conversion, let's say, and then you go to put your plasterboard straight on there, there's quite a lot of shrinkage and movement as that uh, tantalized treatment dries. And that can actually cause issues with your plasterboard. Um, don't think it would be that common, but it's probably a good way to go. In our last garage conversion, our previous home, we I use um, metal stud work because it's even narrower. It's about 50 mil, and we were really tight on space there. So I went 50 mil, and that worked quite well. Um, but you know, I'm happier working with timber, so that's the way I've gone. That was the kids returning from the Christmas fair. Um, a massive thank you to all the people who volunteered to come and get involved today. Um, I decided against it in the end. I, I kind of put a, a um, mention out last week saying if anyone wanted to pop along and make a bit of a day of it. But it ended up being such a crazy last couple of days. It just, I, I wasn't going to make the most of people's time. You've got people coming to give you a hand. You really need to spend some time thinking about exactly what you want them to do. Have all the materials here. 
and you know things were just a bit of a mess a crazy last couple of days but there were people offering to drive a long way to come and spend the day here um, which was truly humbling but um, I will not turn them down completely and we'll try and get something sorted when we build that workshop. Right, back on, back on, studs. I'm just gonna use some of these little galvanized brackets and what that will do is it will kind of just stop. There's no chance of racking really because it's a soft, it's contained in, but one or two connecting this to the block work will just stop any movement. It will make it so rigid. Um, and these ones are quite thick and they've also got a big enough slot hole there that will just take a concrete screw. So that should be quite a quick addition. Tim, why are you measuring from the roof, you may ask? Well, the, roof, the reason for that, the reason for that, is I know our roof is perfectly level, so that's one reason. But secondly, uh, I'm, I've got to raise the floor in here somehow. That's either going to be an insulated floating floor or an insulated screed. And that's just down to budget and whether we want underfloor heating in here or not. That's still to be debated, but it just makes sense to go 1.2 down, 1.2 down, and then I'll end up with a small strip of plasterboard at the bottom, which is fine. And I won't put in that bottom timber until I know where our floor height will be. So that's to be decided. Right, we'll mix it up a little bit. We'll do this one with the nail gun. It's definitely quicker, but you tend to, I don't know, don't have as much control over it. With the screws, you can back it out, tweak it. You know, you get a bit of feel for it maybe, but speed over quality or just being efficient, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it'll go, but I don't want to wedge it in there until I've got the membrane on. Of course, with the slope ceiling, you just got to go beyond a point and then you're in. And if you start making it too short, then you won't go in. Hey, you'll be too loose. So, in an ideal world, we'd go in top first. But I'm not sure I can turn it around now. Oh, yeah, I could. I could. Is working now getting the top in first and kicking the bottom in I don't want to wedge it in completely yet because I've got a membrane in the back I think I'm gonna have to call it there because I think the kids are wanting to put out the decorations it's that time of year we're always a bit early because Joe likes to do it around her birthday weekend so that's it we'll pick this one up tomorrow okay we're back another day another wall I've got to get these walls done and um, we've we've been chatting over the weekend and we've decided that we are gonna get this room to a position where we can move the workshop back in at the end of this week, it's Tuesday now already. And that's because I don't want the marquee, which I've borrowed of a friend and it's already been up far too long. I don't want that to be out any longer than it needs to be, especially over Christmas and the weather's only gonna get worse. So I wanna try and get the walls insulated, perhaps plasterboarded, but maybe not even that far. Um, and perhaps also try and get the floating floor down over the next few days. Then I can move everything back into here. 
I don't have to worry about anything outside over winter. Uh, this will become the workshop space temporarily until the workshop's built and then I can still have a working utility and work on that end. So we're kind of, um, we need, just need to get to that phase. So we've got to get these walls built. Biggest straight edge I could find. Right, our last section is in, but it's really belting it down outside. I just hope my workshop and all my tools are surviving out there. That's my table saw. Sad times. Next thing to sort out is the top of the door, just the timber that will carry the plasterboard on the reveal. Uh, but I can't just measure up as it is because I haven't allowed for our new floor. So I need to do that build up on the stud here and then I can kind of work out from there. We've got 80 mil Kingspan out there. I'm gonna go to the bottom of the studs because I'm pretty sure that's uh, the, the highest point of the floor. That's where it will end up. So 80 mil and then we've got uh, 22 mil flooring. and it's at that point that we'll have our, our door sitting onto it. What I'm gonna do, I've put in this timber at the bottom just to hold everything square. When it comes to fitting the door, this block work's gonna be cut out. I'll also cut out that bottom timber and I'll probably just put a little coarser brick set to sit the sill on and if I bring up those to the same height as the insulation, that should work quite well. Oh, I don't really want a huge step over. There's already going to be a step down into the garden from here. over three or four days so sorry if the video is a bit ch -ch 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 chop chop even changed the camera halfway through so now I'm gonna crack on tonight and pull a late one I'm gonna try and get this floor leveled out I'm not sure if I'm gonna do much video footage on that because I'm still working out how I'm gonna do it I think I'll just knock up a bit of screed sand and cement screed to bulk up the corner because there's a good 40 mil there and then I've got some self-leveling compound if I need it then I can um, fill the other voids with that but I didn't really want to start buying a hundred pounds worth of you know uh, self-leveling compound if I could help it it's all going to be underneath the damp proof course before the insulation the only reason for it is because I don't want the insulation boards to rock at all and you need a fairly well blinded or, or screened uh, floor to do that so that's the next task thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed click down below click the bell symbol and you'll get notifications when the next videos are up and ready but that's it, thanks for watching. Remember if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.